and good day. This is the weekly technical update for the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Sunday, May the 19th, 2024. I am <clears throat> going to start here on the NDX cash market uh, chart, and I'm on the weekly chart. And as I did in the S&P, I also want to bring into conversation uh, the alternate count, which kind of remains there for right now, uh, but it may take priority and become preferred by the end of the week. So that's why I want to go over it right now. So beginning here with the NDX, the biggest change, of course, is that instead of this being the finishing point for cycle wave three, I drop it down a whole degree and it only completed primary wave three. And that made the ABC down to the October 22 lows as primary wave four. And then what we've been working on, considering it as a developing and now finishing primary B wave, right? So this would have been primary A and this would be primary B. That actually is still alive. And I will discuss that in just a moment. So, but with this is primary wave four, then it changes this from being an ABC to being five waves of intermediate degree. And so by taking it from that low and just flipping and going one, two, one, two, and then three, four, and then we're putting in a fifth wave of, and to, to finish a C wave, no, but at, under the alternate, it would be, but to finish intermediate wave three, and excuse me for the movement of the mouse. Uh, so we have intermediate one, intermediate wave two. We'd be looking for five waves of intermediate degree. So this was always the big difference. We had that the, the, the uh, two, uh, the alternate preferred could run together with neither one breaking any rules up to about this point. Now, being if this is just going to be the finishing point for an intermediate third wave, then we'd still be looking for a decent, a fairly decent sized correction coming up. And that would be in, in an intermediate fourth wave. And I'll discuss that in just a moment and show you some preliminary what a fourth wave would look like in terms of downside. So, but instead, I leave it as A, B, and this being the finishing of a C wave. And so the difference is going to come is how this next move starts to come off. The high would remain, basically both are going to finish in the same area, whether it's a C wave or whether it's a third wave, it's finishing in the same way. And because, in, in all honesty, the wave itself is very characteristic. They say carry the same characteristics of personalities, a C wave and a third wave. So here we go. So coming down, this would be primary wave three. We have an ABC down for primary wave four. Now we are in a primary fifth wave. This is the alternate. And then we have intermediate one and two. Now we're breaking down an intermediate wave three, of which will consist of five waves of minor degree. And they're labeled in sus, in that color, in the orange color. So we have one, two, three, and four in, and we're in minor wave five. To, and once complete, it's minor wave five up to complete intermediate wave three. Then we would pull back. So we start to add some fibs here. This actually is old. This belongs with the primary B. And the primary B wave, if it were to conclude at 19,180, and this market reversed hard off of that level, I mean, reversed hard, then this thing, I would suspect that we are in the beginning stages of a C wave. But here's the catch. Being that they have the same type of characteristics, I would expect if we're finishing inter intermediate wave three up here, and they both have that same level, 19,776, but above 19,000, we have, uh, and previously when it was the alternate, there are numbers that go above 19,000, and that would be the expectation. So really, both counts, while one is like, yeah, expected to, to extend the primary B wave, we're seeing this fifth wave extend. So not only the minor fifth wave, but now the minute fifth wave is also showing some strength and extending, which suggests that we've got another 100 or 200 points, or excuse me, 
another 500 to 700 points in the possible, in the realm of possibilities. Okay, so let's break it down more. And this would be, I'm now going to walk both, uh, but not, not as strong, because as we drop down into here, those counts would likely fall in sync with each other. Now, something else that I will add as well is that the market is getting, um, between the S&P and the NASDAQ, they're starting to di diverge just a little bit in terms of how high should they go and what are the counts, the, the internal counts. And I'm likely to go over, I know I already made the recordings for the S&P, and I I realize that I, I have looked at them, but I may look at them again and just continue to, uh, not because I need to make a decision about uh, is it is it the preferred or the alternate, but just as the alternate as presented may not may not fall in sync as with the uh, with the Nasdaq, and I would not suspect that the Nasdaq could crest and drop strongly or do something opposite than than that same strength being felt and seen in the S and P. So my my point being is that I really do think that that we need that all of the indexes and the ETFs that are related to like the Nasdaq and the S and P they need to really be in sync with one another. And so yes, there's one that the weighting may be different, but overall in these indexes, the weightings are pretty much the same. All right, so back here, one two one two three four we're inside five minor five on the daily. And we have one, two, three, four of minute. So we're in minute wave five to finish minor wave five to finish intermediate wave three. So we can now bring it down. Let's take a look at the four hour chart and we're inside this fifth wave now. So there is the minute three, minute four, we're in minute five to finish minor five to finish the uh, intermediate wave C. No, excuse me. Huh? To finish intermediate wave three, I flipped and went over to the other count. My apologies. So now inside minute wave five, we have minuet wave one and two, and then the minuet wave three breaks down. Now, this is where it's still not abundantly clear because we're not coming down far enough to either suggest that this is a sub minuet wave four. And we're going to go back up and finish the minuet wave three, come back down into four, go back up and finish the minuet wave five and the minute wave five. And then on up. So there's still a lot of flipping around. Now, put that together with the fact that NVIDIA reports on Wednesday. So we could have a bizarre Monday, Tuesday, right? Because NVIDIA on, on Friday did close down. It's just above uh, 20 points. So it was like 1878 or something like that on Friday, 1880. It was down on Friday for that expiration. Well, now we've got earnings on Wednesday. And also we have a volatility expiration on Wednesday. So the market's going to get pushed and pulled, I think, uh, quickly. So I think we got a lot of movement, hopefully, is as yeah some some different but i think it's in terms of swing trading and maybe i for sure day trading um there may be a lot of position jostling but i can't i, I think it's going to be within nvidia because that's where the report is coming and so a lot of posturing back and forth and there'll be i think an inc another increase in the volatility as we lead into um both the volatility expiration on wednesday and after the close uh, the report, the earnings report from NVIDIA. So that's going to put a lot of play here in the NASDAQ. But we can start wrapping some fibs around it. We've got this four. So let me bring this back down now. Let's take a look at the hourly chart and see if I can pull down some of these numbers from above. So what I've also tried to do is color code the, the, where they are. So this is the minuet. And this is minuet wave three. And that's what I'm looking to finish up here. So minuet wave three can come in as high as 18,951, 952, or even, even a little bit higher because we know the NASDAQ loves to exceed. But 
But that would suggest that this is just a four, right? So we look at a one, two, three, four, and we go up now, hit this, finish wave three, drop again in a four, which brings us back down to here, go back up in a five, and that time we, we likely will break 19,000. So right now, 18,951, that's the resistance. Doesn't have to hit it. If this comes in three, four, we'll get one more little push to over here, and it's going to come in likely within this, I would think. So, <clears throat> but yet to come a four and a five, and then we still have to work on this one. So once we get four and five, it's going to finish the minuet wave five. So first minuet wave three, and a four, and then a five, four minuet wave, or minute wave five. So minuet five, minute wave five. And then we push out, and then we see that that also finishes minute wave five and minor wave five. So we're getting up to that level where this should all start to come into play and finish. And we have <laughs> NVIDIA on Wednesday. So it could be a really quick force one direction and then quickly in the other direction. Because once we're done with minor wave five, I'm going to pull it back out so we can take a peek minor wave five, then we're looking for intermediate wave three and that bigger uh, correction. Now, let me put this on the five year and we can see here. So we would be looking for an ABC, again, an ABC down. If it is an intermediate fourth wave, let's look at what those fibs are going to look like. Again, we're already walked through where this thing can complete this and the third. And then we get a nice, a bigger correction. And we're just going to take a look. I already did that, didn't I? And I'm going to put this up here at this first juncture. And just above 19,000. Let me just kind of take a peek. 19,000. Um, well, it will do fine. Let's see. I am going to activate the drawing and push it up to the no, I'll tell it there. So these the fourth wave, 16,000, 15,000, 19. And now we'll see what happens. Look at that. If we finish up, so what's what's kind of what Elliot has told us all along? That once we're done, here's our next zone, back to the fourth wave of one lesser degree and check it out. There's 382, which sits at the top, and 618 that sits at the bottom. And we're looking for a larger fourth. This one, eh, you do a coin toss because I normally would not look for 0.618 on a fourth wave, but it's the NASDAQ. And so 382, nice. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of the bigger picture, no matter what. So here we sit. And we're going to say, hey, what if this does stop right up there at that 1.382, which would be for a primary fourth wave? What happens if we if we do get to that level? Let's just take a look. I think I still have it there, right? At 19th, right where we sit, <clears throat> right, right where I think that this could end. 19,200-ish, plus or minus. If we get there on Wednesday or the, the first pop or something, takes it up there and then the reality hits and there's something not you know picked up by the by the initial algorithms and this thing reverses and it continues to reverse getting that kind of a drop started should, should not be that much should not be all that difficult excuse me so we have here it is again on a little bit bigger picture there's the window here's the high the start of wave four, the bottom of wave four. 
fourth waves, when in progress, will normally find the terminus, their end point within the price territory of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. If I'm correcting an intermediate third wave, the, the fourth wave of one lesser degree is the minor fourth wave, and here it sits. And that's what I'd be looking for. Now, that's if it's a third. I'm going to come down in a four. If it is a C wave and it's coming down in five waves of intermediate degree, well, I'm going to be looking for it to go right on through 618. But you can see that's quite a large drop. So there is plenty to trade. There'll be plenty to trade. There's no need to worry about, well, where's the end point? There's going to be so much trading in here. The focus needs to be, what is this move? What is that move? What you know, As it starts to come down, what's going to bring it? Ultimate targets are just kind of like ongoing because here's the deal. You're trading. You're trading it. Now, maybe not every day, but every other day or once a week or whatever your, your trade style is, there'll be plenty to do. So it'll take a while before ultimately you could say, is this now going to stop in a fourth wave within the upper levels of our fibs and turn and go again? So intermediate four, intermediate five to finish primary wave five. Intermediate five to finish, primary five to finish cycle three. So again, I also want to add, it, this kind of fits because I've, I've been talking for a while about it won't make any difference really which count ultimately takes hold. As a trader, yep, you got a ceiling that you're going to put over there a little bit now. But it's going to be, it was the same ceiling no matter which count actually comes through. We've carried it higher. I've continued to, to use this FIB level, 19,000, and I kept saying it, but we had you know, some starts and fits and stuff where there was the possibility that completed it. But ultimately, we always had this top line, and now the market is letting us know, well, that's the one we're going to probably go for. So however they're going to get there, well, that's up to them. So that counts either way. Either we're going to finish an intermediate three and come down an intermediate wave four, or we will finish that primary B wave and we'll start heading down in a, a primary C wave, which will consist of five waves of intermediate degree. So again, this is an intermediate third. We're looking for that now to turn and start to one, two, three, four, five, come down and end up below there. Whereas right now, we've got a much higher, much higher zone. Here is, is below 10,000 or roughly down to it. And here is 14,000. So it's a difference of 4,000 4, points, basically. You know, 3,200, 4,000. It's a lot. In any case, that's what the NDX looks like right now, though, I got to tell you. Moving averages, look at them putting in this little rounding bottom here in this moving average, which is great because it's not necessarily the right place. But the market, if you really kind of come down and you start looking at a daily level, oh, we, st we started to put in rounding bottoms, rounding, rounding. So it all fits. I'm going to go over to the NASDAQ, to the futures market, the NQ. And it pretty much is the same. I'm going to go right down to my four-hour chart because what we're really counting is the possibility that it that in the alternate that it is a primary fourth wave low in 2022, and we're in that primary fifth wave. And within that primary fifth wave, we've got uh, wave one is over here somewhere. There it is. One two one two. And so in this one, I had not changed this, or did I? Yeah, three, four, yes, it's in a minor way five, but they were hiding. So let me just find these and pull them up out here so that you can see them. And they'll move again. I got to tell you, as soon as I switch out of this chart, if I do that, they'll probably, they will. 
the one and the two has now gotten up real high. So let me just go here for a second. This is just a shorter. There is primary wave three, primary wave four, uh, intermediate one, two, and then we have again, uh, one, two, three, four, and we're inside minor wave five. And within minor five, we have one, two, three, and four. So this, this is the area we want to start to look at because we want to start to determine where does this all finish up. So right now I can add, I believe this one will be okay. And I'm going to put in this up to there, go over to here. And you can see the 618 is sitting up, 2.618 is sitting up there. So I'm going to edit and the rest of these are not applicable. So we'll just use that top one. And it's color coded to the minor. So this would be the minor five. This is its next level. The inter uh, 1.382, so the primary B, I'm leaving it there, but that's at 19,167. Ah, so ultimately, intermediate wave three could take it out. Minor wave five could take it out. Take this out and go up here. And then begin to correct, right? The intermediate third wave. So in other words, one, two, three, four, we're in five. We get up here, we get up to here. We got that same deal. I got a fourth wave. But is it going to be a fourth wave? A prime, uh, excuse me. Is it going to be an intermediate degree fourth wave? Or is it going to be end of the primary B wave? And we're coming down in the initial stages of a primary C wave, which will be five waves of intermediate degree. So you can see how we're looking at it, right? Intermediate degree will contain big moves. This is October of 2022. This is December of 2022, where wave three began under this count, or where the C wave began under this count. So the, either one is now getting mature. So I'm looking forward to at least be done on the third wave, do a four, and then go back up at a fifth and an intermediate degree to finish this guy. And then come down again. So one more time, whether I'm looking at it coming down now as a, as a primary C wave, or if this is going to top out in that primary fifth wave, and then the, the cycle degree third wave goes above it, so everything that I've been looking at and working through from the January 2022 highs would just begin, but it's going to begin from a higher level. So it's not that somebody's wrong, somebody's right. It, that part doesn't make any difference. It's all about the trade. And trading now, we need to look and see what this market is going to tell us. Are you going to break higher? Are you going to go up? If you are, then I a maybe I need to adjust my deltas or I need to to position myself to take advantage of the strength to the upside, to take advantage of the how volatility is going to shift and move around. So there'll be plenty to do and there'll be plenty of trading. Directionally, here's what we could look for. What is going to bring, what's going to make it do it? It's all technical at this point. I mean, yeah, we got this stuff with, with you know, artificial intelligence and, and, and any company that supports or produces for artificial intelligence is on fire. And that's, yeah, that's the way it is right now. But if this is a finishing move, they'll continue to produce and will continue to develop artificial intelligence, but I, I do believe the market will correct. They'll be, they'll find a different reason. And it could flip back, folks. It could flip back to the reality of inflation's not under control. And so what happens then? I'm not saying that that is the case. You know, they could continue to stimu stimulate this whole system for as long as they choose. So until that doesn't become available anymore, and we have to really kind of just put it together. Now, this has opened and the market is up 
18 or the futures up 18 and the, and the S&P's up 550. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up. One, two, three. Still, even on this short little time frame, let's go down to the one hour chart and see, see there's one, two. Okay, now we built it all out. So we have one, two, three, and we're down in this little four. I am actually, because I want to see this, so we can look and see what we got going on overnight. There you go. So we're just going to open it up to see the three is up here. And so this, this would need to be a four. And if this is, wow, now even I get like too much real estate. One, two, and oh, this is the three. And it's up here. It needs to be right there. And this could be A, B, D, 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 C. This could be an A wave. We get a little bit of a B wave. Uh, what it can't do, because if it goes above that high, which is 18,723, 724. Oh, excuse me, that's so low. 18,760.75. So if it goes above that, then the fifth wave is in progress. And this would have to be the fourth. Otherwise, we come back down. And we can run fibs for a continuation of, of for just the fourth wave from there to there and again just to clean it up because i don't need extra lines and we don't want and it, well, i don't think it'll go very deep so here we have it and there again there's the fourth wave the previous fourth wave even on this little tiny uh scale right this is minuet, this is sub-minuet. Here we have it on the sub-sub-minuet level. That's the previous fourth wave to this fourth wave. If the three is there, this is AB, we'd be looking for it to come down into here. So we have to leave open that potential that the market can drop and come back down into here and then rally one more time, getting above here and then getting up towards here. We have the others as well. We can put a three in, we can see where that three comes in. And then we can look to see where this five comes in. And if, if we have it around 19,100 up to 19,167 right now, and that fits the B wave. What do we have? I think we've got some stuff above it. And above that, we have, now these gaps would fill in as the market progressed. So we have above this, we have 19,896. So we, and I got above that, I believe. I took them down. We can get above 20,000 if, if we're still looking either way that could come in an intermediate fifth wave and i know i'm saying a lot and it can get confusing well, we're going back out primary intermediate one two this is finishing intermediate wave three intermediate wave four intermediate wave five brings us all the way back and wherever this tops out to put that four in under the uh alternate count primary wave five we continue to have a larger push so in other words we have intermediate one of primary five intermediate wave two of primary five intermediate wave three of primary five intermediate wave four of primary five intermediate wave five of primary wave five and if that brings us back up here or here or even higher then it's going to be finishing primary wave five and then in a cycle wave three sits above it so there's a lot to come and again now i just want to take a look at the cycles and just review the cycles if they're they're going to be similar to the s p and right now the s p and the spiders uh are really looking that We've already reached a, a cycle trough, and now we're are back in the up phase of that cycle. That was a monthly, and then we have a three month. Um, and then, so the next turn would kind of point to a trough being put in, and that's a cycle trough, a cycle low, not necessarily a price low. So we're not going to be looking for the major lows to come in by the end of uh now it would be the end of may into june excuse me we're there it would be um end of june into july that's what the cycle then rolls again 
uh, but there's also that possibility that it's shifting just a little bit. So it be, it's reaching the trough or the peak early. So you can add and subtract days around that 30 mark. And, and the, as long as the market is being consistent, plus or minus a couple of days can be expected. But in any case, we, we don't have, I don't think, a major trough like the three month until um, September. So there's a lot of things that continue to add and bolster that we're probably heading up through the month of June and then quickly trough off. And if not, then it really is going to come in at the uh, end of May. So again, May 22nd, NVIDIA's earnings. There's going to be, I think that a lot of our decisions will be made. Now, here's the other point. We have seen so much where the market does tear into a stock. You know, one of the bigger ones, one of the MAG7 tears into it, knocks it down substantially, only just to buy it right back up. Now, that I think I can also put together because of the wave pattern. Because we are in an intermediate third. So if anything's going to correct, it's going to be within the context that we still have more of an intermediate third wave to do. So bearing that in mind, as we reach up to this high, we're looking for a larger pullback. And again, as I just demonstrated, or I just talked about, even here in the futures market, if we're here and we get up to a, a, an intermediate third wave and it comes in here, you're looking, here's your target for the, a fourth wave to come into this level. No matter what, this level will come up first not going to hold but they it will produce a support level there it's a previous fourth but the size would tell us differently and it may break it quickly but it will stop and look here's the target area for a intermediate degree fourth wave i know and i'm trying not to be confusing because it's this degree and this finishing the third here we do a four, come back into here, and then do a five that runs up and takes us up here. That's yet to come. So if you're looking at a timeline, you're looking at a cycle basis. Well, okay, so we get this four, and that maybe takes us into the end of June, beginning of July, maybe. And then our next trough is not really due until September. And then you're like, hmm, okay. So four, five. And so as you get larger cycles that are going to begin to turn and have downside pressure, um, and you're going higher up in your count, then you're starting to move into, okay, primary wave five, cycle wave three. You know, what kicks it off? What starts it? Oh, we got plenty of that. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. This is enough. Um, and again, no real major uh, numbers coming out next week. We got some at the end of the week, of course. Um, initial jobless claims and the S&P puts out their PMI um, data. So the next Elliott Wave update will be tomorrow, May the 20th.